Welcome back. In the last videos, we added the backend authentication and also a way for us to sign users up to create new users in our Angular 2 application. Now I want to sign users in and store the token which we're getting. So let's work on the sign in page in our front end app. I will copy the form from the sign up component, add it into my sign in component. I theoretically don't need the username, but we still use, this on the, use it on the back end. We require it there in the validation. And we could remove it there because we're not really using it, right? So let's quickly go to the user controller. And on sign in, I'll remove this name validation rule here because we're not using the name anywhere here in the sign in. Uh, so that is really just a kind of a relict. Uh, we don't need it. So with that removed, we can also remove this username form in the sign in form. The rest is the same though. So that all should work. And with that, I will only rename this method to on sign in and this button to have a sign in caption. And of course, you could think about clever ways of using only one component for sign up and sign in. But again, this is not really what I want to focus on and using two components is totally fine. I will add the on sign in method in the TypeScript file of this sign in component, of course. I also will inject the off service here because I want to authenticate a user. I want to sign the user in, make sure to add the import. But in the off service, we have no method for signing a user in. So let's quickly add a sign in method here. We know we will get an email and we will need a password. So these are the two arguments this uh, method will receive. And in there, I now again want to reach out to my backend and I'll copy that code from the sign up method. The URL changes though to users slash sign in. This is the URL we created on our backend. Use of course your URL if you have a different one. We don't need to pass the name. We only pass email and password, but the rest is exactly the same. So this is still the same, the same header and email and password we send to the server. So with that, we get the sign in method and with that sign in method, well, in on sign in, I can reach out to my off service, sign the user in. I know that here in the on sign in method, I will receive the form, which is of type ng form. Make sure to add this import from add angular forms. And then here I want to pass form value email and whoops, form value password to this request. And this will return an observable. So let's subscribe as always and simply print the response and also print any potential error we might get. So super simple in the end. Now let's go back to our running application to the sign in page, enter a valid email address and the appropriate password, open up the console to see if it works and hit sign in and invalid credentials, whoops, uh, let me use a different one. Here I should have the correct credentials and I do. So here you can see the token is returned in the body, of course. Now, it would be interesting to have a look into this token because we can, it's not encrypted in a way that we couldn't decrypt it. Um, we can't validate it here on the front end because our secret, which was used for assigning it, was stored on the server. So it can only be validated on the server, but we can have a look into the token on the front end. This will work. And for this, we can simply create our own little script. So in the off service, I will add the map method here like this. And for this operator to work, I need to unlock it by importing rxjs rx like this and here I know that I will receive the, the response which is of type response of course and first of all I want to extract the token so I will call response json which is this javascript object which will have a token property holding the token so if that I got the extracted token now I want to want to decode the token and we can actually write the code for that on our own I already prepared this code and will copy it in here. And of course you can find it attached to this video or in the video description where you can find a link to GitHub, which contains this finished um, code. So this basically just uh, splits up the token in its three pieces, such a JSON web token has. And then since it is base64 encoded, decodes it. 
So in the sign in component, we now know that this will actually be the decoded token. Of course, renaming it here doesn't really matter, but it's clearer what we're getting. And with that, let's reload here. Let's open up the, um, the developer tools to see the console and let's try signing in again. And here, this is our decoded token. This is what it actually contains. You see the issuer, which is our backend, and a couple of other things like the expiration time. And yeah, there is, this is what our token consists of, what we have in our token. We could change this on the backend. We could add other things to the token. But this is our base token. And if you need any information from the token, well, this is how you can get it. More importantly, we received the token in general and decoding it to have a look is nice, but not the end of the road here. I want to store that token. So my goal is to store it in our app so that we can send it with subsequent requests. And I will do this in the off service too. Here in the map method where I decode the token, I will return not just the decoded token. Uh, instead here, I will return the decoded token but I will also return the original token like this so that we also still have the, well, token as we had it before in the signing component. Therefore, this will simply be my token data, let's name it. It's the last time we rename it, no worries. And with that, we get access to both the token as a string, as the decoded object. And then I will add another operator here. It's the do operator. Do is simply executed on every, well, every time subscribe fires, every time we receive new data, you could say, then do comes in and does something, allows us to do something. Here we also get the token data. So we get this transformed data here too. And the thing I wanna do with the data is I wanna store the token. So what I will do is I will reach out to my local storage and there I will set a item, name it token, and store my token data token. So this string token in the local storage. And I choose the local, local storage here because I want to have this token persist even if we reload the application. Let's have a look. If I go back to the app and let it recompile and reload here, and we sign in one more time, you see we get the, the token here. But more interesting than this, if we go to application in the Chrome developer tools, to local storage, you see that here we get this token key. And if I reload the page, you see it's still there. So this persists even if we restart the app, which I did when reloading the page. So now we can always reach out to the local storage to get our token and send it to the server. Now, of course, you could also store the expiration date to make sure that you automatically force the user to re-authenticate if the token has expired. I won't do this for now. You saw how to get the expiration date though. We decoded the token and there it was stored. So that would be possible, but I'd say enough of the authentication of the signing in. Let's next have a look at using this token to send it with requests to authenticate the user to successfully create new quotes. Because right now, if I try to create a new quote here, let's go back to the console and hit submit. We get an error because we don't provide a token because we configured our backend to require a token. So let's work on this next so that we are able to create token quotes again. See you in the next video. Bye.